Hey guys, in this video, we'll be talking about uh, Quincy's method to determine the susceptibility. Okay, first let's go through different types of materials. Basically, ferromagnetic uh, materials are those materials in which the electrons, the spins of electrons get aligned in the direction of magnetic field and very strongly. In diamagnetic, they get aligned in the opposite direction of uh, magnetic field. And in paramagnetic, it is again in the direction, but weakly. So basically, not all of them get aligned uh, totally in the direction of magnetic field. Okay, so now let's go through the basics. Uh, B is your magnetic flux density, flux density, and H is your magnetic field. In vacuum, B is nothing but mu naught into H. Okay, and uh, inside a material, let's say this is some material, and there are magnetic field lines that are pen penetrating through this material. Your B is nothing but mu naught into mu R into H okay, so this is your magnetic permeability, or or you can write B inside the material as mu naught H plus M. Okay, basically M is the amount. Uh, M is magnetization, uh, the amount by which the material gets magnetized. Okay, so if you equate equation one and equation two, uh, what you get is mu R H is equal to h plus m okay now basically i divide the entire thing by h so what i get is mu r is equal to 1 plus m by h okay so m by h is nothing but mu r minus 1 okay and this is nothing but your susceptibility okay now uh -huh. You can also see it in this way. The amount the material gets magnetized is directly proportional to the magnetic field. Okay, magnetic field and uh, magnetization is nothing but a proportionality constant, which is a susceptibility into H. Okay, so basically, this is the basics. Now, let's move on to uh, Quincke's method to find this. Okay. This is your apparatus. You have a tube in which there's liquid, and these are magnets. So when I switch on the magnets, the magnetic field will vary along x direction, and hence the liquid will get magnetized and then uh, experience a force uh, along x direction due to the varying magnetic fields. So when I switch on the magnets, this is what is going to happen. The liquid is going to rise, and there is going to be a high difference edge. Okay, so this is your basically your height height difference H. These were your magnets. Okay. And yeah, so basically there'll be a downward force that's acting on uh, liquid due to gravity, uh, which will be nothing but A H into rho into G. Okay, there'll be a downward force here and uh, uh, the magnitude will be equal to this and there will be an upward force due to varying magnetic fields. Now let's find out how much this will be. Okay, how much will this be? So just remember one small thing. Whenever uh, there's a force that's being experienced due to field, due to field, uh, then the force can be written as a negative gradient of potential energy associated with that field. Okay, so uh, here let's ignore the negative sign for now. Okay. So here the magnetic potential energy is nothing but this and force per unit volume per unit volume on this liquid is nothing but this. Okay. Now let's integrate it over volume. Uh, so basically total force on the liquid would be nothing but force is equal to integral of a f dx a is the area of cross section. And uh, yeah, so I write force as 1 by, I substitute this equation 1 over here and write force as 1 by 2 mu naught susceptibility into integral of t b z square upon dx into dx. I cut this and this is what you get your force as 1 by 2 mu naught into susceptibility into integral of d b z square and this is your integral. Basically, b is nothing but uh, the magnetic field at this point. And B naught is nothing but the magnetic field at this point. Okay, so the apparatus is such that this point is very far away from the magnetic field, 
uh, and hence uh, this is equal to zero almost. So this is your total force that's acting downwards due to magnetic fields, okay? Now uh, we equate force due to gravity and force due to magnetic, uh, varying magnetic field, okay? So we get this equation A, and then we bring everything but susceptibility to the right side, and this is what you get, okay? So this is what you get. Uh, yeah, this is what you get, okay? So susceptibility is two mu naught into A into rho into G. These, is, these are all constants. And H is the height difference and B is uh, magnetic field density, okay? So basically, just remember one thing, H is your height difference. So if this is your H, you usually measure from here. So this will be, uh, wait, just a second. Yeah. So you basically measure from here. This will be your H dash. And this will be your H. So you usually use the instrument to measure H dash. So H will be nothing but 2H dash, okay? So yeah, this is all, all the theory. This is all the theory part. Now I'll uh, show you on a simulator. Uh, how the apparatus looks, okay, and hope you get a better idea of what's going on in the experiment, okay. So basically, I'll attach the this uh, link of this simulation in the description, okay. So basically, these are the magnets I was talking about, okay. Now, if I insert the probe to measure the magnetic field uh, density, so this is what I get. So this measures the magnetic field for me. Okay, so as I increase the current, I get higher magnetic field. With lower currents, I get lower magnetic field. Now, let's look at Quincy's setup. So, yeah. This is a Quincy's setup. Let me zoom it and explain it for you. Yeah, here you can see a tube. This is a tube, okay. As you can see, this is very far away from the magnetic field. The other end is very far away from the magnets. Okay, this is a microscope through which you're looking and you see this picture, all right? And uh, basically what you do is uh, increase the magnetic field levels and note down the difference in height and hence put it in the formula to uh, attain the susceptibility, okay? Yeah, so basically when I decrease the current, the height decreases when I increase the current the height increases because uh, increase in current is equal to increase in magnetic field and since you're increasing magnetic field and if we look at the formula if we increase magnetic field it should also increase because susceptibility should remain constant so yeah that's pretty much it let's see the result this is what we get our susceptibility as so you basically do this for different current and measure different heights and then finally get your susceptibility of the solution. So thank you, I guess, that's it.